Hello everyone and welcome. In this video, I'll be analyzing and designing a flitch beam. Also in this video, I'll be talking about what is a flitch beam, when to use a flitch beam, and steps on designing a flitch beam. So first thing, what is a flitch beam? A flitch beam is a composite section comprised of a steel plate placed between wood members or steel plates or channels attached to opposite sides of an existing wood beam. These are typically used where a solid wood member is not practical, such as depth limitations or heavy loads, or where an existing wood beam needs to be strengthened to resist higher loads. A flitch beam consists of different materials. In this case, we have steel and wood. So the section properties will have to be transformed in the design process so that the two bonded materials will experience the same strain and deformation. In a transform section, one material is transformed into equivalent quantity of the other material. So in this case, we'll be transforming the steel plate to into a wood member. We're going to be doing that. And I'll be showing you guys that right now. So we have a problem here. We're going to go over the problem. We're going to end up uh, having to use or design for a flitch beam. So what do we have here? We have a floor plan and we have an existing house. So we have, and the client wants to save... Uh, material so he wants to save uh, the existing frame the existing joist the client also has a bearing wall here and he wants to get rid of that bearing wall to create a more open feel and you know so we're gonna be we're gonna we're going to be removing the bearing wall so that means that we have to support the joist the existing joist so we will have to have a beam here so what do we have for loads well we have the load is 15 pounds square feet Live load is 40 pounds square feet. Uh, the exterior, de uh, from exterior wall to exterior wall, the dimension for that is 21 feet and 4 inches. The length of the beam will be 12 feet 9 inches or 12.75 feet. So, what we're going to do now, we're going to add the dead and live load together. So, dead plus live will be 15 plus 40, which is 55 pounds square feet. And a trip width that the beam is going to experience is 10.75 feet or 21 and a half feet divided by 2. So half of the load is going to go to the beam and a quarter of the load is going to go to the exterior wall and, and this side another also a one fourth of the load will go to the exterior wall. So we have our, our dead plus live, which is 55 pounds square feet. We have our trip width, which is 10.75. We're going to get a uniform load. So we're going to multiply 55 pounds square feet times 12.75. We're going to get 591.25 pounds linear feet. Now this is a simple span beam. So we're going to find the maximum moment and maximum shear using these two equations. W, the uniform load times the length of the beam squared, so this will be should be a squared here, miss that, divided by A will give us the maximum moment and the maximum shear will be the uniform load times the length divided by 2. So I have here the uniform load times 12.75 to the second power divided by A is going to give us 12,000, approximately 12,000 pounds feet. For the maximum shear, we have 591.25 times 12.75 feet divided by 2. That's going to give us three, uh, approximately 3,700 pounds. So we have a maximum moment, maximum shear. So that's the first thing you want to do. Because uh, next, you know, we could use four LVOs, and four LVOs could suffice. That it could work. But you'll see that we're going to have some issues when it comes to deflection. Uh, so we'll be using this table here. This table is for LVLs. We're going to be using microlamp LVL. And again, the maximum moment is 12,014 pounds feet and the maximum shear is 3,769.2 pounds. So we're going to try three seven and a quarter LVLs. So for that, if we, we go where it says seven and a quarter and we go where it says moment. So for our an LVL beam, a 700 quarter LVL beam is going to have a maximum moment capacity of 3,555. So you just multiply that by 4, we're going to have 14, 
1,220 pounds feet. Same thing goes for shear. You get your shear, you multiply that by four, we're gonna get 9,640 pounds. And then for inertia, 56 times four gives us 224 inches to the fourth. So when it, in terms of the moment capacity and shear capacity, four, seven and a quarter of wheels, it works, it's, it's good. Uh, it has a higher moment uh, capacity than the 2,000. So 14,000 is greater than 12,000 and for shear 9,000 9, is much greater than 3,000. Now there is a problem and that is for deflection. What uh, you're finding the required inertia for dead and live, the required inertia for dead and live is 275 inches to the fourth. And the required inertia for live is 300.8. So for live, it, it this controls. Required inertia for live load controls 308. This is what we need, and what we have is 224. So, that being said, four of yours is not going to be enough. And not only that, there's a depth limitation. We want to have the alveol to be seven and a quarter just because the existing joists are two by eights, and we, w we don't want this to be deeper because then. Uh, it's going to create a bump out in the ceiling and in some cases uh, architects or the client might not, may not like that. So we're going to design for a flitch beam. So right here we have our four LVLs and here we have a flitch beam. So we're going to design for a flitch beam. So step one is we're going to find the required inertia from steel. So what, would we, what, what do we know? We know that we need 300 inches to the fourth for inertia and in this case for the flitch beam i'm going to use three lvls so for three lvls the inertia is 168 inches to the fourth so we need 300 all we have is 168 so the difference between between that's going to give us the required inertia that we need to make this work the inertia from the steel plates so in this case we have 132.8 inches to the fourth of inertia that we need from the steel plate now that we know that, now that we know that we need 132.8, we need to find uh, the the width of the plate itself, and that's actually very simple to do. And I think I have it on the, on the next slide. So we want to find the the width of the steel plate. But in order for us to do that, we need to find the modular ratio. So what is the modular ratio? The modular ratio is just the Young modulus of steel divided by the Young modulus of wood. In this case, the Young modulus of wood is for the LVLs. It's 2 million PSI. And for the steel, the Young modulus for steel is 29 million PSI. So and it's going to be 29 over 2 is just the ratio and we're going to get 14.5 so that is a modular ratio so that's the next thing you want to do is find that once you have the modular ratio what do we know we know that for steel we need 132.8 inches to the fourth for inertia and we know that inertia the equation for inertia is b times h to the third power divided by 12. Now we, we want to transform the steel, and I talked about this earlier at the beginning of the video, we want to transform the steel into wood. Um, so in order for us to do that, we need to multiply the inertia times the modular ratio times n. So here we have 132.8 equals to the modular ratio times b the width of the steel times h, the height of steel, to the third power divided by 12. So we know the modular ratio, we know the height, we do not know the width of the steel, b. So we have to solve for b. So when solving for b, you just put everything in, you solve for b, and we're going to get b, and b turns out to be, let's see if I have my notes open. B turns out to be 0.36 inches. But there's two plates here. So we could divide that by two. So 0.36 inches divided by two 
it's going to give us 0.18. So right there, I already know that the, the width, I want to go with a quarter inch plate. So this plate is going to be a quarter inch. This plate is going to be a quarter inch. And that's that's typical. It's nothing too crazy. And it's, I've, I've done this before. I've seen this before. So that's good. All right, so we have quarter inch plates. Now that we have that, we want to uh, find the area of steel, the transform area of steel, the transform section modulus of the steel, and the transform section modulus of, uh, excuse me, the, the transform inertia of the steel. So what do we know? We know that the steel is a quarter inch. Now there's two of them. So we're gonna multiply that by two. So it's gonna be a half inch. So we have a half inch steel plate. The, or plates, excuse me, there's a quarter inch plates. When you add them up, you get half inch plates. So sorry about that. Uh, we have that. The height of steel is seven and a quarter inches. So the area of steel, the transform area, is going to be and the modular ratio times B times H. So in this case, it's going to be 14.5 times B, which is a half inch, times H, which is 7 and a quarter inches. When you multiply this together, you're going to get 52.56 inches squared. Now we're going to get the section modulus. So the section modulus again is going to be the modular ratio times b times h squared over 6. So just put in everything. Squared over 6. And the section modulus for this will be 63.51 inches to the third. Now the inertia. Again, it's going to be the modular ratio times B times H cubed over 12. And just put everything together, and you're going to get 230 inches to the fourth. So this is the section properties of the steel plate. Now, what about for wood? We want the wood too. So we have three LVLs. So the area of the three LVLs, in this case, is... Uh, one LVL. The LVL that we're using is one three quarter inch, three quarter inch by seven and a quarter LVL. Now there's three of them. So three of that is gonna give me an area of thirty eight inches square. The section modulus of the wood is going to be forty six inches cube, and the air the Inertia of the wood is going to be 166.7 inches to the fourth. Now, once we have the area section modulus and inertia of steel and the area section modulus and then the inertia of wood, we're going to add all that together. Well, not all of it together. You're going to add the area with the area, the steel, the section modulus, the section modulus, and the inertia with the inertia. So. The inertia of steel plus the inertia of wood is going to be 396 inches to the fourth. The section modulus of steel plus the section modulus of wood is going to be 63.51 plus 46, which is 109.51 inches to the third. And then the area of steel plus the area of wood will be uh, 52.56 plus 38. And that's going to give me 90.56 inches square. So now that we have that, we could find the moment capacity of the flitch beam using the section modulus, we could find the shear capacity of the flitch beam 
And we already know that the required inertia is 300 and we already have 396. So we know that this is good. But we want to find out if we're also good for moment and for shear. All right, so let's do that right now then. So the moment capacity, the allowable moment, is going to be uh okay so i did miss something you need to know the you need to know the bending uh stress for wood and for shear so i'll get that for you right now so if you using this manual the trust joyce manual uh they have a pdf and, and they have uh design properties for let's say the LSL LVL and the PSL. So we're gonna look for the LVL. So here for the uh, bending stress we have 2,600 psi. For the shear stress we have 285. So we're gonna be using 2,600 for bending and 285 for shear. So let's do that now. Now that we have that, then we could find the uh, moment and shear capacity. So the shear, the moment capacity is going to be 2,600 psi times the section modulus of the composite, which is 109.5 inches to the third. When you multiply this, you're gonna have it in ter terms of pounds inch. I want it in terms of pounds feet. So I have to divide this by 12 uh, to have it in terms of pounds feet so in the end this is going to be two thousand I mean not two thousand it's gonna be twenty three thousand seven hundred and thirty three pounds feet which is great and I think it was twelve thousand around twelve thousand pounds for the moment that it sees and then for shear shear is going to be uh, two times the shear stress times the area divided by three so two times 285 times the area of the of the composite material in this case is 90.56 inches squared divided by three and we get 11 1,169 pounds. There's a comma. By the way, for the moment, the moment here, I didn't say, but is the bending stress of the section modulus. And if you want to uh, have it in terms of pounds, feet, you have to divide it by 12. So, in the end, this moment is greater than, the moment capacity here is greater than 12,000 pounds, feet, and then the shear capacity of this flitch beam is 11,169, which is greater. Let me see what it was before. Uh, where is it? Right here. Uh, it sees almost 4,000 pounds. So it's good for moment. It's good for shear. And the required inertia is 300.8 inches to the fourth. And we are getting, uh, I think, almost close to... 500 I believe so where is it yeah f uh, close to 400 396 inches to the fourth so we're good for moment we're good for shear and we're good for inertia